Hi and welcome to the car guys and to what is possibly the most exciting day of my life. That's right, today the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus finally arrives. Literally the day after we shot the Bonhams video, the government introduced more stringent social distancing policies, which meant the Bonhams decided to cancel the live auction and to go to sealed bids. Now, at the time, when we first drove that car, it was ticketed at between 30 and 40,000. And to be honest, it felt and drove and looked like it was worth every single penny of that. Now, that kind of money is well out of my budget. I don't have that kind of money to spend on a car, but once we heard that the Bonhams auction was then going to sealed bids, I thought, you know what, maybe it's probably worth having a little bit of a punt. So we put in a nice cheeky bid, a nice low one, right within my budget, bit top of the budget, but you know, it's such a special car. I thought it's definitely worth it. And lo and behold, a couple of days later, we get the phone call from Bonhams. Are you still interested in that car? Is that bid a full and final one? And we said, yeah, absolutely. Of course we're interested. We wouldn't have put the bid in otherwise. And they said, well, the car is yours. The car is sold. Honestly, absolutely over the moon. I skipped up and down the garden. I skipped around the house a few times. I am so excited. I can't tell you the levels of adrenaline that I'm running at the moment. Just waiting to see that car unloaded is gonna be such a thrill. Now, you, if you remember from our Bonhams video, when we first drove the car, I was absolutely smitten. I mean, it did things for me that I can't even explain to you how amazing they were. Uh, the, the whole feeling of the way that it drove, the power output, the noise, the smell, it was completely intoxicating. And, and I've not driven anything like that since. I think probably the only thing that comes close to that kind of experience was the 993 RS that I drove. It's taken a little while to get here because obviously with the restrictions, it couldn't be delivered straight away. So we finally got it on a transporter. I've just literally got off the phone with the driver who's delivering the car. He says he's gonna be here in about an hour. Here it is, it's arrived, it's arrived. Look at this, look, 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 look. Look, can you see that? How amazing is that? Oh, can't wait to see it come out of the car. It's gonna be amazing. So here she is, she's tied up all neatly in this trailer. The lovely man is now gonna drive her out. I love these car transporters. They just smell so amazing. It's like oil and leather and petrol of proper, proper cars. This is an amazing day. So here she is, she's arrived. She's finally at her new Essex home. Oh my God, just look at it, it's just so incredible. I can't wait to get in and drive it. Fortunately, that's not gonna happen today due to our current lockdown problems, but don't worry, it will get there soon. Just listen to her purring away, just sitting here. I can't wait, this car is so bloody amazing. So here we are, we're actually in the Lotus, just sitting here idling outside my house. It smells fantastic, it's so lumpy. This thing is just wiggling all over the place. It's so good. We're gonna have a little chat in a minute. I'll run you through some of the bits of the car, why I specifically wanted it, and we'll just talk loads about it. Okay, here we go. This is ultimately the first ever drive of this what could only be described as the most amazing car i think i've ever owned and i've i've owned some pretty amazing cars so first impressions it's a beautiful day um unfortunately although it's got a lovely carbon fiber dash it's very reflective so there's quite a lot of ref 
sunlight reflecting into the windscreen, which is a bit of a pain. So I think we might change that. How do I think, how does it drive? It drives it brilliantly. The, the way this car is set up, and we'll get into who set this car up in another video when, we, when Damien and I do a full review. We'll go through all of the bits and pieces about this car and why it's so wonderful. But the responsiveness is just on a whole new level. I know I've said before how much I like racing cars and, and if you look at the video I did on the 993 RS, you'll see that that car really turned me on as well because of its rawness and the, and the fact that it was so lightweight and stripped out. And I guess that this is in exactly the same vein. This has got a cage in it. There's a little bit of carpet, but I think that's basically to stop your feet from being on fire with the exhaust on the passenger side. It's everything that I love, I love about owning a car. Modern cars are brilliant, but there is nothing like a stripped out race legend to really get the adrenaline pumping and to really get you focused on the bit, the job at hand, which is driving. And we were basically doing 30 miles an hour and I feel like I'm on some kind of rally stage on the Lombard RAC. There is so much feedback through this car. Everything is alive. The steering's alive, the chassis is alive, you know, the turning, the lock to lock on this car is tiny. So the turning is incredible. A slight movement in the wheel and a car's darting all over the place. You really have to let this car do its thing on tarmac roads. It is completely safe. It gives you so much confidence. One of the things that does take quite a lot of getting used to is the lack of power steering. I think I need to go down the gym. I can't tell you how much I'm loving this. I really am absolutely adoring it. We're warm, we've got good temperature. Should we give it some beans? I think we should. Okay, bit of beans. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Holy, holy cow. That's immensely fast. That is immensely fast. We're in second gear. We're doing roughly 20 miles an hour. We're at 3000 RPM. Open the throttles. Beanage. Whoa, 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 whoa. I had to turn the camera off there for a couple of seconds just to get my breath back and gather my thoughts. My brain was absolutely scrambled. So, but we're coming up on a few corners. So I just want to. I'm not going to go bad because obviously I've not driven this car ever fast before. But oh, the steering is so responsive. is I'd like to get someone that can actually drive to have a go in this and to show me what he's capable of doing. So if you're a very competent driver and your name happens to be Sir Chris Harris, then please get in touch because I'd really like to know what this can really do. Right, and here we are, we're sitting in the Talbot. Absolutely amazing, I can't believe, as you saw, came off the truck this morning, fantastic seeing it arrive coming out of the darkness the guy that delivered it actually said that front was a bit touchy isn't it which i think was absolutely brilliant so we've got the thing fired up got it out of the truck taking it the five minutes up the road to where we store the cars because it obviously can't live in my driveway can't wait till we get to drive it a little bit more around these lovely essex roads i got a little bit overexcited when i drove this in fact words fail me to try and give you an impression about what it's like um, I guess if you imagine one of those old fairground roller coasters that you went on as a kid that were in the local fair in the park and you were never quite sure whether the thing was going to fall apart or not and in fact that was part of the thrill am I going to die? aren't I going to die? 
that's kind of what this is like to drive quickly. I definitely need to go and improve my driving skills, so that's something that may come to this channel very shortly, because I am definitely not as good as this car. In the meantime, I want to take you around a few of the bits of the car, which I think, for me, are particularly interesting. The first thing you notice on this car are the enormous wheel arches. Now, you, this is obviously standard to this car, so when this car came out of the factory, it was a normal-bodied Lotus Sunbeam Perfectly, it was black and it did have a silver stripe on it, but these arches didn't exist. So this car was basically being taken to what can only be described as a works homage. The guy that owned it before wanted to get as close to a works car as he possibly could, that was still usable on the road, but have that proper RAC Lombard rally pedigree, that rally feel to it but still be drivable and be normal. So once he'd managed to source the car, and we'll go into more detail in another episode, he set about converting it and changing it and adding things to it. So these arches were added, as were the front, front splitter. Now these are actually aluminium and they're bonded to the body. So these are properly done. This is a real thing. This is not some kind of fiberglass kit that's gone on here. This is the real proper deal. But these wheels, are actually period correct. Look at the size of the tires on these things. Now, it may not seem in this modern age that these are particularly wide tires, but they completely fill the car. If these arches would, weren't on here, the wheels would be outside the body by this much. So obviously it's running the proper tarmac spec track on this vehicle. So in the back here, as you can see through this window, we've got the full, we've got a half cage. This is not a full cage because this has got to be usable as well. Behind the passenger seat is the spare wheel. Every piece of glass in this car, apart from the windscreen, is plexiglass. Whoop, 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 whoop. If we open this up on its gas struts, you can have a good look inside the boot. Obviously, there's nothing in here apart from the spare wheel. There's the jack, uh, which is pretty cool. It's lovely in here. It's perfect. It's all painted beautifully. Let's close that down. Little clips on the side. Let's move around to the front. Okay, here we are on the front of the car, and obviously the thing that stands out the most on this thing is these enormous rally driving lights. I mean, just look at them. They've got these beautiful covers. Look at that. One of the things I really can't wait to do is when it gets dark, is to take this down the lanes with these babies switched on. Oh my God, I'm gonna feel like Russell Brooks. I'm not gonna drive like Russell Brooks, obviously, but I'm gonna feel like him for sure. So why don't we have a quick look under the bonnet and see what this baby's running. So just look at it, look at this engine. It's been pretty much shoehorned in here. Can't believe the size of it. Double overhead cam, Lotus engine, big air filters, massive Delorto carburetors on here that literally drink fuel like I drink wine. Honestly, when this thing starts up, when we did, gave it a little bit of beans earlier, all you can smell is just petrol being poured by the bucket load into those cylinders and it's just burning through it. I reckon this thing is definitely well into single figures when you give it some beanage. Right, here we are in the best seat in the house. Nothing is gonna beat this. I've driven Porsches, Ferraris, you name it. Damien and I struggled massively with the seat belts in this car. We are old, we're a bit creaky, but yeah, everyone gets old, right? So here we have big stay belt harnesses. We know that we've got four, they're four point harnesses. They grip you really well. These seats are amazing. So these, if you look at the period rally cars, the driver's seat always had this scooped area on the side and the passenger seat were more Recaro based. Now, this car obviously built to recreate that. I mean, I can see the floor over there. I literally can look through the body and see the floor. Now, that's not a hole in the floor because it's rusted. That's just because who needs that little bit of trim that used to go down there? It just adds weight and weight is our enemy. Like these windows, see, plexiglass. Now, what does that mean? You're thinking, brilliant, Jason, that's lightweight, that's really cool. It is really cool. However, one thing I've discovered is that when you're on the move and the window's down like it is today, because it's a lovely warm day, when you try to wind the window up again, yeah, it's not very stiff. So it tends to bend out slightly, which means you can't get it seated. So yeah, that's something I'm gonna have to get used to. But to be fair, it's so bloody hot in here, I don't think we'll be doing the windows up on warm days like this anyway. All of those feelings and emotions from the first time we drove it came flooding back once I saw it come off the back of that trailer. 
I'm so, so excited to take it out and do a little bit more stuff with it. The great thing about actually owning a car as opposed to test driving or having a quick look at it or kicking its tires is that you get to have a really good opportunity to have a good walk around the car. You can look at all the little bits and pieces you can touch, you can feel it because it's your thing now. So I can spend as much time as I want just pouring over this thing. And trust me, I've had a little bit of a walk around. In fact, if I'm telling the truth, I probably spent about an hour just walking around opening the bonnet, checking all the fluids, just really looking at this car in proper, proper detail. And oh my God, it does not disappoint. This thing is an absolute peach. I guess the question is, are, am I as pleased now as I was or excited as I was when I first drove the car? Are those feelings still there? And I have to be honest, absolutely. Getting in it, starting it up, and then just driving even the couple of minutes it took to get to our storage facility was just amazing. I cannot wait to take it back out again. There is so much to talk about with this car. There's so much driving to do in it. As soon as I knew that the bid was successful, I immediately got onto the internet, found the owner's clubs, joined the one that the car originally came from. One of the great things about buying a properly restored car and by restored by somebody who likes detail and lavishes love on a thing is that you end up with a massive amount of information and this car is no different and in fact the guy who used to own it has compiled an enormous amount of receipts and invoices and MOT certificates and all of that turned up in two huge folders which I can't wait to lease through and pull out some really really key pieces of information which we can then share with you guys when we do a proper review of this absolutely amazing piece of kit. So what's it like having the car now, having it literally in my grubby little mitts? I tell you what, it's amazing. I'm so blown away. I can't believe uh, that we managed to get this car. I thought we were gonna be massively outbid by everybody. I'm definitely gonna take this car to the national event. Definitely gonna use it in more things and show it off. It is such a great piece of art that it deserves to be seen by lots and lots of people. This is not gonna be a garage queen. Like all of our cars, this car is gonna get driven. It's gonna get used and we're gonna take it on some awesome road trips. Right, there it is. The car is back at its new home. I know it's a bit of a short one, but because of the circumstances, we can't do a full review. So don't worry, that is coming at another date. Well, that's it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed watching the delivery stroke collection of this absolute amazing Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments because we read them all. Ding that notification bell for when another episode's uploaded and we'll see you on the next one.